Hello, welcome to Fibertown. This is the Fibertown podcast. I'm Emily. I am Chain of Fools on Ravelry, and you can find this podcast on my blog at Fibertown Podcast. Five, sorry, Fibertown.blogspot.com. Um, I'm also on YouTube, and we have a Ravelry group. So come and say hi. Alice wants to say hi again. Alice, do you want to have your cookie now? Cookie. Can you give me your, can you shake? Thank you, darling. All right, go have your cookie. All right. So, hi, it is, let's see, Wednesday the 20th of February, and if I seem a lot out of sorts, it's because I had a root canal this morning, and I wasn't sure I'd be up to recording, but I couldn't resist, so this might be a short podcast. I don't know if I'm really up to scratch, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so welcome to some new people. We have, let's see, from Pennsylvania, Sandy, hello, and Lisa, who is Fiber Nymph. She has um, the 90% Knitting podcast. I've been a uh, viewer for quite a long time, so hi, Lisa. From Austria, we have Twinny Mama, hello. From California, I'm sorry, from Canada, we have Nicole from British Columbia, hello. And let's see, from Colorado, we have Maria, as well as another podcaster, Denise of The Knitting Den. Hi, Denise. And last but not least, from Louisiana, we have two folks. We have Shea Bear, who is Shayla, and Darren of um, Knitting in Circles. So glad you could join us. Alice is back for more cookies. All right. Oh, I forgot one. Um, Texas, Lauren, who's also a podcaster from Lemnit Crochet. And she has, she's a Boston mama, too. Alice is a Boston terrier, and she has Charlie. Um, I used to have a Boston boy who we adopted when he was five, and we were childless. This was a long time ago, and he has, he passed away about seven years ago, and we felt like our kids were finally um, old enough for us to get a puppy, and she's, she is definitely a work in progress. So hello, hello. Um, I have some things to show you today, but first I wanted to mention two things. Number one, we have a monthly giveaway, so enter your, your finished objects in that thread in the Ravelry group. Please be a member to, to enter or something and um, keep the chatter to a minimum. You might have to open a chatter thread. Um, also, very exciting, um, we are at about 80-something members right now, but when we reach 100, I have another giveaway, and this time it's yarn. Um, Patricia from Meduseld Farms. Meduseld, I looked this up because I like words. Meduseld means, um, I think a mead hall. This is a while ago. Um, I swear I'm not on Vicodin. Just Advil from the root canal. But let me think. I think it has something to do with mead, like the, the medieval drink. Um, and anyway, because they make honey there and the maple syrup I've talked about at length. And... Um, and yes, Patricia sent me a fantastic package, including some of her maple syrup. I'm going to have to make breakfast for dinner soon to have some of that. As well as two skeins of yarn. And these, one of these is going to be for the prize giveaway for 100 members. I'm not sure which. Let me show you what I have so far. There's Meduseld, the label. This one, oh, it's really, really lovely. 50-50. Romney alpaca. How is that for a blend? 280 yards of a bulky yarn. So excellent value, seven ounces. Um, most bulky yarns come like 90 to 110 yards per ball. And this is lovely. You know, Romney is a, I believe it's a medium or long wool and has beautiful shine. And then the alpaca just gives it um, that softness, and it's a lovely two-ply. I believe it's a two-ply, yeah. So that is the Romney Alpaca, which I love. And this one I also love. This is 100% Romney. 200 yards. Loveliness. Also a two-ply. And it just shines. It shines. And it is not scratchy to me at all. I wasn't sure, I didn't think you could wear Romney next to your skin, but I totally think that I could. Um, 
beautiful stuff. So what I will probably do when we reach 100 members is open a thread if you would like to win one of these, and I'll probably have you say which one you prefer. And then the um, lucky person that gets picked randomly will get whatever one they indicated in their thread because I can't decide. I like them both. But I'm very excited to see them again at the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival um, and really get a look, a better look at what kind of yarns they have. Um, all right, so, oh, this is their sample card. They have Romney, Jacob, and Frisian. Have you ever seen Frisian before? I haven't. I really would like to try some. I don't know much about the sheep. I need to look it up. There's the Jacob Worsted. And these are all the different Romneys. Ooh, the bulky is nice. Okay, enough of yarn fondling. All right, let us get on to show and tell. I have one FO this week. And it has to do with Meadowcelled yarn as well. This is my Wins Chief. It was almost done when I showed you last week. It's just amazing. And I wanted to show this, the stretch on this is, look at that. It looks really good on. This is for my husband, but I've worn it a little bit myself. There we go. I had to do the decreases over again because on this ribbing part right here, the twisted rib, I forgot to do decreases on this quadrant of the hat. So I finished it and pulled the yarn through the last eight stitches and I had a gigantic, it made a gigantic ploof right here. So redo, but it's come out really lovely. Again, um, this is the Winds Chief by Stephen West. I think I did this on sevens, US sevens, which are 4.5 millimeters. Um, definitely will be making more of these. Definitely. So excellent finished object for knitting. I do have some non-knitting finished objects. I told you last week I had sort of a hankering to make some, some project bags. And let me show you what I've got. These are all going to be gifts. This is for a friend, a very generous friend who's always helping me out. There's the lining. And the little drawstrings. Sock monkeys. That's bag number one. Bag number two fell on the floor. This will be a gift for a little girl who loves kitty cats. And I'm going to put her birthday present in it. Got all the little cat breeds on there. And she's a big fan of pink. I've got some pink lining. These are from the uh, tutorial, online free tutorial called um, In Color Order. It's a blog and she shows you step by step how to make these. And if I can do them, probably anybody can. Um, not much of a seamstress, but these are really easy. And this is the final one, which I adore with a brown top with chrysanthemum fabric and some nice yellow on the inside. This one is going to be for a friend of mine who is on hospital bed rest, bed rest expecting twins in a few months. And I'm going to send her some extra knitting needles I have. She wants to spend her hospital bed rest time learning how to knit. So if you guys know of any good resources, I mean, I'm going to send her links and maybe buy her the um, Debbie Stoller book. But, yeah, I hope it's, I hope it's uh, worthwhile for her and that and she can have a nice project bag. Okay, works in progress. I should say dead works in progress, at least for one of them. The misbehaving burdock card again, through no fault of its own, through no fault of its own, it's all my fault, is going bye-bye. But I saved it to show you all. Here it is. Whee! Yeah, you think it might be a little big? You think? I think it's a little big. I can't, I don't know what happened. Um, I cast on for the 38 and a half, which is not huge. I did gauge. I got gauge. It is a mystery to me. But at knit night, 
my seven-month pregnant friend said, I think that'll fit me. And she took it, put it around her pregnant belly. It fit her perfectly. So, yeah, I put it on waist yarn so you all, you all could see. I don't know if I have it in me to restart this. We'll see. But for now, the lovely burdock cardigan by Maura Kirk in Malabrigo Rios in Coco. Rest in peace. I do have a snuggle still that I'm crocheting, and there's not been a lot of progress on that, but next week, next week I'll have it done. Do have a happy little work in progress to show you though. I am making fingerless gloves for that little girl who's getting the kitty cat bag. And these are the, ch the Koigu, let me look it up, Koigu Children's Fingerless Mitts. I made this pattern once before with some self-striping sock yarn. It's adorable, adorable, adorable. This time I'm using um, that lovely pink lemonade I showed you last time. You can see I have my, my thumb stitches ready to go. This one's finished except for the thumb. Got some cute little pooling. Um, I don't remember the colorway, but it was Luna Aura yarn, hand dyed. And I got this at Mer my very first Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I don't have the ball band anymore, but I remember it was Luna Aura. And that's the first one. I'm just I'm gonna tell you the author of this pattern in a second. The second one is well underway. There she is. On the hand, I have my little Boston Terrier stitch marker. Um, this is by Wee Ones on Etsy. She's amazing, Wee Ones. Um, let's see, I have some artichoke ones by her as well as well as some sushi and cheese, slices of cheese. So there they are. I'm knitting these on US one and a half. I believe that's 2.5 millimeters. I could be wrong. But these are the carbons that I love to use, and I'm using one of them just to hold the thumb stitches. And uh, I heard that the carbons is making circulars, and I think Fiber Space in Alexandria, Virginia has some. So next time I go down there, I'll have to check them out. I could get behind a few, some circular carbons. They're really nice. There's the rest of my yarn. It's really fun. It has bits, I don't know if you can see, as well as the pink and the yellow, little bits of orange. See that right there? So very bright, happy colors. And the author of that pattern was Issa Webb, Child's Koi Goo Fingerless Mitts. Pretty good pattern. Okay, so that's it for the whips. Weaving and spinning. I did do some weaving on my apple rose scarf, but not enough to bring my big loom out here and show you all. Um, that's something I also need to get cracking on. But I did start spinning my Julie Spins um, BFL Silk 50-50. Let me show you the card. Julie Spins. She has two shops, Artfire and Etsy. And... There's that lovely 50-50 blend, Purple Lilies. It is, it has three or four different kinds of purples as well as this coppery gold that sort of fades into grayish brown as it hits the purple. Um, just really beautiful. There is no pre-drafting required with this yarn, with this fiber. It's just butter, just butter. So I have one bobbin. You really can't see any of the copper on here, but I'm just going to two-ply this. Um, no Navajoing here. It's the nature of the fiber is such that it's just, there's going to be barber pulling in the singles, so I'm just going to make this a two-ply. And there are five ounces, so I should have a nice little bit of lovely purple yarn when I'm done. Um, so yeah, I'll have that finished by next week. I washed my vegetable medley into the world 
Uh, I hadn't washed it last week when I showed you all, and it's even nicer now. So excited. Thinking some uh, Zuzu's petals with that might be what's up and coming. And what else is up and coming? Um, I think that I have enough of the Jacob left to make some fingerless gloves to match. And I want to see if I can work out getting a similar twisted rib that's on the diagonal like that onto a pair of fingerless mitts. I think that'll be really cute to match that hat. Um, and then I have another birthday coming up. And I'm thinking of combining these two. This is Lorna's Laces Worsted in Daffodil. And this is just Patton's Classic Merino that I have. I have a couple of these that I get on sale and occasionally I'll dye them. Um, they're really fun to work with. But I was thinking fingerless mitts using this as a, as a background and then using this to do a, a stranded um, fish pattern. It's this little girl that I'll be knitting for likes everything that has to do with the ocean. So I'm going to swatch for that, see how it turns out. All right. Um, I really have not much else to show you all today. As I said, I'm not 100%, but I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing what I'm doing right now and got to see Alice and say hi. Uh, yeah. All right, so don't forget about the RAV Group um, Fibertown podcast. Join. If you haven't, you can enter your FOs for a monthly pattern giveaway, and then you can enter to win one of these lovelies. Once we reach 100 members, it shouldn't be far off. I'm still working on my technical issues as far as getting on to iTunes and getting a, an RSS feed set up that's video friendly. Um, yeah, my tech guy is working on it. So that is that. Um, Alice, you want to come say hi? No. Nope. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time in Fibertown. Bye bye.